Do these videos help prove that there are applications of Tai Chi that can actually work? Hey guys, Nick here and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to do cover things a bit differently um, as I feel that this is an important subject to talk about as we proceed for further with other videos. The reason why I say that is, is because when we cover a fake martial artist, all right, um, we are pointing towards the instructor, not necessarily the style. If there is a certain way that something's taught, we need to look at the intention there and if it does make sense. If somebody is teaching, you know, Tai Chi in a way that is in self, for self-defense, but meanwhile they don't understand proper applications of those movements for self-defense, then we can call it BS, right? So uh, these videos were brought to my attention by um, some people commenting on my previous videos about Jake Mace and Adam Misner. And I really just want to cover these videos. I will put links to these videos down in the description below so that you can check out these videos for yourself. I feel like context is everything, so it's important that you watch them first or after uh, I share my opinions on these videos. So the first video is from Street Smart Self Protection and Weapons. And in the video, uh, what is being demonstrated is a good understanding of Kazushi. Um, Kazushi being that push-pull concept in order to make techniques work. So with, with this, as discussed in the video, a, a, a supplement to train, um, there is a deep understanding of this Kazushi, understanding that, you know, working with the push in order not to get your postural alignment compromised and that would leave you vulnerable but also give you a great ability on uh, countering. So let's say grappling with an aggressive opponent and they push, you can sink in with it and nullify the push, keep your postural alignment and proceed to clinch. So with understanding how this works, uh, with an aggressive opponent they push, you can sink in with that push uh, so that your posture is not compromised and you can proceed to counter that. Be it a, a strike, uh, a better clinching position to continue grappling or whatever the case is. And, and the one thing that uh, he makes very apparent is the breathing with it and the movement being very clear on the movement and the breathing on how to sink in and how to breathe out with that push uh, really puts things into context and I find this very useful because as somebody with my style of jujitsu I like being a bit more loose when standing up you know I, so you know it's just that you move with and you can still be sticky like peanut butter but that's my opinion on the matter I would suggest watch the video for yourself so the second video is from Shaddy uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly once again um, and he in this video, he shows the similarities of Tai Chi with Greco-Roman wrestling and sumo wrestling. And also comparing the stuff to uh, judo, more of a nogi style of judo to be exact. And this puts things into context on how Tai Chi is supposed to be trained and where some of the movements derive from. Because if you look at Tai Chi as a striking art, none of it actually makes sense. Pushing hands does not make sense for striking because trapping and all that seems very overcomplicated uh, for the end goal of just to strike someone the entire time. If this was a very high percentage type of technique, we would see it uh, being performed more often in combat sports. So where the video highlights that when you're in range for grip fighting, push hands makes more sense, uh, not really to do trap and block uh, pun punches and such or strikes more like just kind of blocking and working with it to get the advantage on a better grip so the video does highlight tai chi competition uh, where it looks similar to greco-roman mixed with sumo wrestling and you know with pushing hands now making more sense for grappling um, you would see in that in that range where you know grip fighting is important 
So now that we can see that there's Tai Chi competition, the whole aspect of pushing hands makes more sense because when you're in that range, when you're grip fighting, that puts things into context. And as you can see in the video, that Tai Chi as a grappling art makes more sense because of all the movements associated with it. And now that we can see that there's some form of competition here and Tai Chi can be applied as a grappling art, doesn't that make it effective? Or doesn't it give it the potential to be effective? Because with that sort of information, this seems more promising. But what are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, I just kind of want to emphasize the importance of this conversation. Because when we are targeting fakes, or frauds rather, and they teach this mystical mumbo jumbo, they put a lot of things out of context. I mean, they could still possibly be practicing a lot of the same movements, but then, you know, things get lost in translation. And this is a big problem in the martial arts community. We do need to keep a form of legitimacy uh, upheld here. And, you know, if somebody's got a certain goal, we should be teaching to reach that certain goal. Um, if somebody wants self-defense, I should not be solely teaching them sports jiu-jitsu. Or they shouldn't be going to a jiu-jitsu club being taught just sports jiu-jitsu. But that does not necessarily mean that they should not train with the classes where there is sports jiu-jitsu. You know, you still need to mix the combatants with something so that they can get some sparring in and get some practice with other grapplers to improve their overall grappling. So once again, it's getting that overall feel for um, grappling that's important. So sparring in a safe, controlled environment can help improve skills. I mean, if you're not doing combatives, doing real life scenarios outside of sports jiu-jitsu, then, you know, you see somebody pulling deep off and then, you know, being lined up in a position to get punched in the face. But then we need to ask ourselves, why does this happen? And how do these frauds come about? And why are there so many of them? Is it because things get lost in translation over the years? Or is there a certain um, appeal or market that, you know, is being exploited here? The more mystical Chinese martial arts becomes, uh, the more people seem to get interested and buy into it. Let's take uh, Muay Thai as an example here uh, of this, so, uh, this tourist trap as well. Uh, my BJJ coach went and fought Muay Thai in Thailand for a while. And uh, what, he, what he said uh, is if you go there with the intention to fight, they make you run up the mountain, touch Buddha, come back, do your 30 minutes skipping. And once your 30 minutes of skipping is done, then you have to do a thousand jabs and then they teach you a kick. And then you have to repeat that kick 1000 times. And this sort of training progresses over and over and over. So this type of training progresses further from simple kicks to combinations. So we move forward from the simple kicks to combinations. Once again, repetition being the foundation of skill. And of course, sparring comes into play. This way we can get timing of defenses down and so forth. And also applying those combinations. The process of learning how to fight is a very long process. So the point that I want to try and make is here is that there is a process to learning how to fight, right? The same as the same, the same process of this would be like boxing. Learn how to jab, learn some simple punches, learn some simple combos, repeat, 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 you know, learn your defenses, sparring. But when you go to Thailand and you say, ah, you want to learn Muay Thai uh, and they know you're a tourist, you get caught in that tourist trap. So they will teach you all the fancy moves to keep you entertained, you know, so that they can make some money. That's what my BJJ coach told me about the Muay Thai situation there. So uh, I can only take his word for it. But that makes sense. 
So that way some things get lost in translation. So what if we apply that sort of idea with Chinese traditional martial arts? Are there a few people there that can actually teach the real thing? Probably. There are most likely people there that do teach the real thing with proper application, have sparring, you know, going through the whole process of learning how to fight, utilizing that style. And then, of course, you've got people that just want to make money and they, you know, know their market and know how to exploit it. So once again, I just want to reinstate the fact that this is not the type of content I usually want to make, but I just felt like this was very important to contextualize what I'm going to be doing with content further just so that we know we're not making fun of any styles or whatever. And I'm always up for discussion about these types of conversations. Uh, and I would like to engage in those conversations a bit more. Uh, I just feel that, you know, we are targeting the instructors specifically. If there is a fraud, call them out, you know. Um, if there's somebody that teaches something wrong, we, call, we, we can call them out. But I say that loosely because, you know, people, human, we're just human, you know, we're prone to making mistakes. At the end of the day, we are attacking phony instructors. I mean, you get some coaches that are, you know, not as good as others and they make mistakes. But, you know, it's a learning process, um, especially if you start out coaching, it's a lot to learn. And um, your level of communication can be better than other guys. I mean, there are some coaches that aren't very well experienced in the sport themselves compared to other people or other competitors but the way that they communicate demonstrate and teach is more phenomenal than those that are competing and then they do have some of those guys that are just good at both you know what i mean so at the end of the day i'm not targeting a specific style i am targeting the instructor because those are the people that give the, the style a bad name when there could be potential for so much more. And when there is potential for so much more, but then you have, you know, these frauds that make things or make the, the, the style become a joke of the internet. So when it comes to these Tai Chi talks further, I hope uh, this explains things a little bit better where we are not attacking the style just the fraud <laughs> teaching the stuff and we can move further and uh, put things in better context. I, I, I do feel that this is something that needs to brought to light as you know is more fake martial arts <laughs> that are more fake than pro wrestling and you know that is if you put something like that into context it's kind of sad. Hey guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed my opinion on this matter regarding uh, putting Tai Chi into context, uh, let me know down in the comment section below if you would like to have more videos like this. Uh, thank you once again. Please take care, look after yourselves, and until next time.